So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by an amazing guest in the form of Ian Bartholomew. Thank you for joining me. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, whenever it is, whenever you're listening or watching this, hello. So, I mean, we must start off by asking, how are you at the moment? How are you finding this strange year? Uh, all right, actually. I have to say, I was very, very lucky. I was one of the lucky ones. I had a job uh, to go back to, even at the beginning of the first lockdown. You know, when was it? 23rd of March last year. I mean, it's last year. Um, look, we, uh, we shut down production on Coronation Street, but I knew that within two months I was going to be going back. So I was very, very lucky. And I, I carried on working through till January. Um, it's been a great thing for me to be able to reconnect with my children because we spent a lot of time together and I've been away quite a lot the, the, the years previous to, to working on Cory. Uh, so for me, it worked very nicely and, and we live in the middle of nowhere. So we've got outside space and again, incredibly lucky to be able to get out into that and do a bit of exercise and take the dogs out. You know, I can't imagine what it must have been like living in a, in a tower block in the middle of a city, just awful. And I, my heart goes out to people who've had to deal with that sort of isolation. I mean, in the early lockdown, when obviously Cory had stopped filming for that few months, did you find yourself yeah. doing anything else? Any skills like, you know, learning to get out in the garden or baking, anything like that? Oh, me? God, yeah, I did a lot of gardening. The, the garden didn't know what had hit it. The lawns were mown. We started digging the vegetable patch. And of course, at that time, the weather was fantastic. It's not been quite so good this year. Uh, so far, it's been very wet and cold. But uh, no, last year, did a lot of things, did a lot of stuff around the house. Yeah, just got on with stuff. I suppose as well, it's given us all a time to really reconnect and, and be grateful for those people who are still having to go out to work, you know, the key workers, the NHS in particular, and, and everyone who's just continued to, to do what they do best. I mean, what, what's your sort of your, your thoughts about, you know, all the amazing people out there that are just continued throughout? Well, you know, hats off to them. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. Whenever I go to my surgery to, to pick up my, uh, my tablets or medication for the children, because they both got a little bit of asthma, um, I always say thank you to them. I had my second uh, vaccination last Friday. Uh, I actually did a, a little video for our local NHS to, in, to involve people and, and try and invoke people to go and have their jabs because take up was a bit slow at the beginning. Uh, so I tried to do my bit. But, you know, everybody, all those people who have worked through, through the lockdown, postal workers, NHS, fantastic, you know, delivery people, shop, uh, you know, people online. I, I mean, it, uh, you know, let's, let's take our hats off to them because they've kept the country going, really. And of course, Jeff would have been a, a volunteer through the, uh, the, the pandemic, obviously, with his hospital radio. So, I mean, I mean for, for him, obviously, I imagine that he uh, probably would have, um, you know, continued on doing his broadcasting and entertaining the patients. Oh, he would have been in his element, basically, because he'd, he'd got a, a, a captive audience, as it were. And, and you, we know that Jeff is, uh, is slightly prone to blowing his own trumpet. So I think he would have enjoyed himself immensely. Yeah. Now, I mean, and carried on. I hope, at least I hope he would. <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, um, when you joined Coronation Street and, and the character of Jeff, I mean, how, how sort of much did you know, how, how aware were you of, of Hospital Radio? Had it, was it something you knew much about before joining the show? Uh, yeah, I'd done a little bit of, uh, a little bit of research on it, uh, and I'd spoken to a couple of people through, um, through contacts of that I know of, uh, and, uh, and my wife knows of local um, hospital radio. But to be honest with you, I didn't really know that much. But, um, you know, it's a great thing. It's a great thing that you guys do because it uh, keeps people entertained, keeps their minds off what's happening to them. They, you know, and hopefully provides a bit of light relief and a bit of escape from, from the woes and troubles of not being very well. And I mean, especially for Jeff, he seemed to single-handedly run Weatherfield FM or Re Weatherfield Hospital Radio, I should say. So, uh, he, yeah, he must be very talented. <laughs> well, that's the way it looked. That's the way it looked. Yeah, of course. But we didn't we didn't see much of him in the studio, which I always thought was a bit of a shame. I would I would quite like to have done a bit more. I mean, one thing that I think they, they missed a trick would have been, it would have been great if one of the other characters had kind of taken over the hospital radio link and maybe one of them could have sort of continued, not, not necessarily in Jeff's honour, but would have maybe continued and, and that, that would have been quite a nice thing to have seen. 
yeah i mean there are there are so many storylines there are so many strands to all the storylines in coronation street the thing is you can't fit everything in and they have you know they have very long um involved meetings every few weeks to discuss ongoing storylines and a lot of that could very well have been mentioned that could very well have been posited by somebody but it's it's impossible to keep everybody happy all the time and you have to you have to go with the with the big stories or the ones that you think are going to be of of uh, of public interest as well especially with issue driven storylines like um uh, Jeff and Yasmin's story was, and and the uh, and the latest one with uh, Seb and Nina. I think that's a very very strong story. Now, now let's go back to the beginning for you, because obviously uh, back in 2018 we first met Jeff, and yeah. I mean he was obviously a kind of a character that appeared really nice on the surface. So I mean, how much did you know when you first joined Coronation Street about the character and where it was going to go? I was aware that it was going to turn dark. They never, sh they never shared with me how dark or in what direction it was going to go because I'm not sure that they knew totally at that time how it was all going to pan out. Um, as we got, a, when we got about six months in, I was paired up with Yasmin, and they then decided to go into this coercive control storyline with an older couple because it it it, it highlights the um, the fact that this can happen to anybody to anybody at any time in their life and especially a strong confident businesswoman like Yasmin so the first six months I was trying to keep that in mind but at the same time trying to be Mr Bumptious Mr Everybody's Friend but of course that's what he did in public that was his public persona in private he was a complete monster as we know I mean, I imagine that when you're uh, doing a storyline like this, there must be a lot of research that goes into it and you have to kind of do a lot of sort of looking into it, really. I mean, I know when I was talking to Shelley um, last year, she said that obviously, you know, the pair of you were having to kind of, you know, d do that sort of looking into it and, and making sure that you tell it right, because it's it, it's a big storyline to, to deal with. Yeah. Uh, you know, in all in all fairness, the greater part of the insights were handled by the writers who I think did a fantastic job with it. But of course, no, um, I would, I would concur with her is that we, we spoke to a lot of people. I did a lot of reading. So did she, we talked about it between us quite a lot. And we always tried to keep each on a, each other honest on set. Um, uh, and when you get the material, the, when the material's good, you don't have to think too much about it. You're just, you're, you get yourself into the character, you get yourself into the situation and you, and you can play it because you've got the words with which to do it. Um, but we heard some very, very harrowing tales and a lot of people that I know outside work and some inside actually sometimes in, in the building would come up and say, well, that happened to me or that happened to a friend of mine and they'd share their stories with us. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's quite unbelievable how, how many people suffer and are afflicted by some sort of co uh, coercive control or domestic abuse. I imagine though for you, there must be a, a sort of a level of, of you know, you, you must be felt so humbled that people are trusting you with their personal stories and that they're being so open with you because, you know, it is such a personal thing to talk about. Yeah, it is. Um, but we did take it very, very seriously. And because of that responsibility, I, I think that that helped us actually get us through. As I say, we kept each other honest. And if it, if the other actor wasn't giving us what we needed, we'd just say, look, I can't go there unless you go there. And we can't, you know, emotionally. Um, so we were, we were all in, in the building, the whole, the whole team were very, very aware that we had a responsibility to tell the story with truth and integrity as much as we could, you know, because otherwise you're, you're trampling on people's lives, on their real life problems and their real life situations. I mean, is there ever a worry when you play such an evil character? Although Shelley would uh, regularly say that he's probably misunderstood and that, that maybe not evil is the right word to use. But, but do you ever worry that the, the audience will forget that you're an actor and, and will, will think you are Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, I, I benefited uh, from lockdown in other ways, uh, as I've mentioned earlier on, but in, in one particular way where because nobody was going out and I wasn't going out, I didn't actually come into contact with many members of the public. And those that I did uh, in, in the village that I live just outside a, a mile or so down the road all know who I am and they leave me alone anyway. Um, so I didn't really get that much um, attention off screen. 
but the attention that I did get was always very, very positive. It was along the lines of, you're horrible, we absolutely hate you, but you're telling such a great story and it's such an important story. Keep on, keep on doing it and keep up the good work. So it was actually really very positive most of the time. But yes, there is, yes, you do worry that somebody's gonna come at you with their handbag or a stick or, and, and give you what for, because you know, they can't make the distinction between you and the character, but uh, mostly, I think uh, people can, so that's that's good. Thank goodness. <laughs> and I mean, the other thing as well is that there's so many of the scenes that you did which were so powerful. I mean, one of the scenes that um, I talked about with Shelley was the one in the the Rovers, where obviously uh, Jeff had forced Yasmin to wear that red dress that just didn't oh, no, suit no. her, wasn't for her. No. Um, so, I mean, to do those powerful scenes, you, I mean, it, there, a there must be a lot of pressure on your so shoulders, but you must be kind of working on them, thinking this is going to be fantastic when it goes to air. You can never let yourself think about what's going to come. You have to think about what's happening in the moment. And uh, to put yourself in that place, we went to some dark... I had to go to some dark places to, to, to play Jeff. And I know Shelley had to go to some very dark places to, to allow herself to be, to be downtrodden and belittled in that way. Um, so you're always focusing... You're always focusing on what it is you're doing in the moment and you let everybody else do their job the editors and the director and they put it all together with the sound and the gradings and all the other stuff that they need to do in post-production and then when you see it you go yeah that was all right i'm i'm pleased with that or you go no i could have done that better i should have done this i could have done that you know you're always you're always full of self-doubt so the, 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 the <laughs> after the event what you mustn't do is be full of self-doubt while you're actually doing it because otherwise you won't step out the door um so i i understand the question but you know we were so immersed in it and we've been doing doing it for so long because uh, it was such a long uh, drawn out process a slow drip feed which is which is absolutely right i think they handled it fantastically well that you're not thinking about what's actually happening on the screen you're thinking about what's going on in your head and what's happening in this relationship so you're very much immersed in it did you do you find that when you're getting into character do you do you kind of have to be left alone for a little while while you're kind of um getting into the zone or are, are you kind of you know busy busy right up until the, the word go you know <clears throat> we always try to keep it light i always try to keep it light on set or in, in theater in, in a rehearsal room because if you're not having fun you're not you're not doing the job you know you don't if you're not relaxed and having fun you, you're not allowing yourself to explore the, the places you need to go to and the things that you need to do um so no i'm 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 not a method actor some of the big scenes yes everybody would know that these were big scenes and these this was important for the actors to have the time and space in which to do it and nobody ever pressured us but you know something like coronation street you don't get a lot of time you're it's it's relentless it's a relentless schedule and um you've got to go in there knowing what you want to do how you're going to do it and then you play with it in the room for a while and then you just then you're on and you, and, and you do it so there's not a great deal of time to think about anything too deeply other than here we are this is what we're doing now all that has to be done at home so or before you go in so you know that was that was the the drawback people say oh wasn't it great playing a such a horrible character such a horrible meanie a baddie well no because jeff didn't know he was a baddie uh, he didn't realize what he was doing. He had an inkling that um, it wasn't right, but um, he thought it was quite normal, acceptable behavior. And that was why he was so monstrous. That was why he was so, why he was so unpleasant. So we were not only doing it all, the, all day at work, we were having to take it home with us and learn it for the following day because, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done outside the studio. I mean, I imagine when you're so heavily involved in such a big storyline, that must get very tiring and it must be very yeah. exhausting for you. So, so, I mean, how do you kind of keep yourself, you know, kind of the, 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 the energy, the, the kind of the momentum going? I, again, I, you know, 
I was lucky in as much, I'm lucky in as much as I lived an hour's drive from the studio. So I used to get in the car and just because we, you know, we couldn't go on public transport because there wasn't very much. And also it was not a great idea with COVID flying around. Uh, so I would listen to the radio and I'd be able to wind down. And, you know, by the end of the, the hour, I'd be, I'd be at home with my family, uh, all being very normal. And, um, you know, how was their day talking about homeschooling, what they'd done, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, so I could, I had a, I had a sort of an escape route, really. I had a, a, a valve where I could just let off steam with my family and it was, it was, it was fine. Um, you know, we were always very aware that it was our job rather than our life. And when you put yourself in the position of somebody who that's their life, you know, we have it very, very easy. So yes, but it is tiring because you are constantly working on it. As I said earlier, you're either in the studio recording it or you're at home learning it and working out what it is you're supposed to be doing. So yeah, after a few months, you see very, very gray, tired people walking around the building. When they get on set, of course, bang, they're on, because uh, that's the job. But um, off, off set, you know, in the green room, in your dressing room, you, you, you have a little snooze now and then if you can. I mean, obviously, Coronation Street, so many amazingly talented actors on that show. And I mean, yeah. you obviously got to work with a, with a big chunk of them, but was there anyone that you maybe didn't get to work with much that you would have loved to have done more with? Uh, actually, funnily enough, I did quite a lot with Joe, the team, but I never felt that they explored Tim and Jeff's relationship very deeply. And that I would really love to have done. Uh, I have to say that was, that was one of the reasons um, I thought I was going into the show. Um, it went in a d different direction and that's absolutely, completely and utterly fine because that's what they wanted. And my job was to do what they wanted me to do. <laughs> um, but that would have, I would have, I would have enjoyed that. Uh, doing a bit more uh, work with Joe and uh, sort of the family relationships and, and Sally Denover uh, playing his wife was, you know, such good fun, such a lovely woman. They're all great. You know, I got on, I got on very well with everybody I work with. So uh, um, I was sad to leave, but you know, it was, it was time. It was, the time was right. And the character, uh, you know, had there was no redemptive route for Jeff, I'm afraid, unfortunately. And I mean, to be a part of the 60th anniversary celebrations must have been an honour to have one of your yeah, storylines feature. Yeah, it was an honour and a privilege to do that because uh, we knew it was going out and it was going to get a lot of attention. And uh, yeah, um, Jeff went out with a bit of a bang, did he? Or was it more of a whimper? I can never tell. Really. Something to do with the garden gnome, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, 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 he came, had, a, had a, an incident, a close encounter with a garden gnome and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean when you get told that this is how you're leaving you know you're going to fall off a roof that must be quite exciting to know that you're going to get to do something quite epic because it was a, a bit of a stunt yeah yeah oh yeah we all like a bit of a stunt um you know it's it's also um mixed with a sense of oh really what do you mean I can't come back when I'm in my 70s for you know a few more episodes just to you know keep the bank the bank manager happy um you know you're you're slightly you're slightly miffed that, you know, they can't find a way forward for the character. But, you know, in the end, that, as I said earlier, is not my job. That's not what I do. I do what, what they set out for me and I do it. I try and do it to the best of my ability. And, um, you know, on you move on, move on, you have to move on. And I mean, as well, I imagine that, you know, when you, you play a character like that for three years, do, do, you, do you kind of look forward to what's next? What's around the corner, the sort of the next project for yourself? Oh, yeah, always. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always something to be learned. There's always something new to do. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm of the, I'm of the camp that goes, right, okay. I want to do something different now. I want to do a bit of comedy or I want to do a musical or I want to do something. And I'm again, you know, I'm, I've had the ability to do it. So I, I, I'll take whatever comes along and um, I'm not proud. I've never really uh, in any way mapped out a career. I just lurch from job to job. If anybody wants to employ me, I'll say, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Uh, and it sometimes leads to uh, some very exciting opportunities. And sometimes you hit a dead end and a brick wall and you don't know where you're going with it. But, you know, I've touched wood 
I've always worked and I hope to continue working until I can't remember the lines anymore or I can't stand up. I'll keep going, I think. What would you say is the one thing you maybe take away from your time on Coronation Street? Maybe you've learned about yourself or that you, you know that you will take on with you. I think uh, the several things, actually. The ability to learn lines very, very quickly because you have to be able to to be able to make decisions about what you're doing for yourself rather than relying on the director or somebody else to tell you what's happening. But I think on a personal level, I realized a few things about myself and I saw a few things about myself that I didn't particularly like. And um, I'm doing my very level best to change them. I think I can be a little bit controlling with my children and my wife, uh, not to the same extent as Jeff but I will admit to being sometimes rather intractable in some situations and I have to stop doing that because that's not right. And uh, Jeff, listening to other people and playing Jeff has, has, has taught me quite a lot about myself, which I, I can take away and, and work on because, you know, part of life's journey is to improve one's own, uh, one's own character and one's own um, journey through it, you know. And I mean, when you say goodbye to a character like Jeff, do you, do you find that hard to kind of say goodbye to someone who's been a part of your life for three, three years? I mean, I imagine that must be a bit, bit weird. I, I think if I'd liked Jeff, it would have been difficult. I didn't like Jeff. So no, it was thank you and goodbye, matey. You've had your, you've had your, you've had your chance, you've had your chips, off you go. Um, but, you know, I had plenty of time to prepare for it and I knew it was coming and I knew how it was coming. So um, in the end, it was I was very, very um, proud to be a part of the show and very honoured to be a part of the show and to be given such a you know strong and important storyline. And it's over to other people now. It's, you know, it, it, it continues because it is a huge massive mighty beast that keeps on rolling and uh, you know other people have taken up the the fight now and they've taken up the uh, taken up the candle as they're holding the candle and off they go and also i imagine on a show like cory you make lifelong friends because you know you all seem like such a close-knit group i mean people like shelly you know tim sally you, you must you must have kind of feel like you've struck gold with the amazing people you got to work there with. are people there i'm still in contact with we text we talk occasionally you know they're very very busy i'm not so busy but that's all right i've got more gardening to do i can see out the window um yeah 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 uh, yes but you have to get close you have to get to know people quickly because you're in a situation sometimes where you're being you know you're you're either being horrible to them or very nice to them and, and you need to know them <laughs> in some in some respects before you can start doing that but but actors do make friends very quickly now i just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you i could continue for hours um, but before we go have you got any messages you'd like to give to anyone who's in hospital at the moment um you know who's going through a bit of a tough time any any sort of message you'd like to give out I think, you know, just rely on the people around you, all the, the nurses and doctors. They're, they're doing the very best that they can. They're doing a, a fantastic job in unbelievably difficult circumstances. We're in, in remarkably lucky in this country to have something like the NHS. So relax with it. Listen to the hospital radio. Keep you happy and just get well and, and, and stay healthy and stay happy if you possibly can. Thank you so much. Look at the parking. <laughs> they joined just at the end. <laughs> but yeah, I was just going to say thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe and hopefully we'll speak again one day. You're very welcome. What's going on down here? Um, you're very, very welcome. Very, very nice to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time.